Another important but often overlooked item in the design of spacecraft is the thermal design, specifically keeping components that need to be hot, hot, ones that need to be cold, cold, and everything in between. Now, these are a lot of very specialized things, and this is something that can be kind of difficult for the average person to wrap their heads around. So I'm going to try to do the best I can, at least covering the basics of this. Although in many cases, even companies that hire satellites, they have special consultants that will help them to manage the thermal system in an adequate manner. So there are three methods of heat transfer primarily. There's radiation where you have something hot that you can just feel it from a ways away, even though you're not touching it. And even though the air around you isn't warm, you can just feel it. Uh, you feel this with particularly hot things. You can feel this when you walk outside and feel the sun. There is conduction, which is you're physically touching something. And so you, if you go outside barefoot and you're the summertime now, you you know touch your foot on the summer, uh, in the summertime on the, the pavement, you'll feel really hot. That's conduction. Or if you touch a hot pan, it's conduction. Convection is the flow of air that will help to dissipate things. So, you know, if I leave a hot pie out, even if it's not really touching anything, it's not radiating a whole lot of heat, but because the air around it's a lot colder, it's going to tend to absorb that. And based off of uh, the laws of thermodynamics, things tend to head towards a natural state of equal temperature, although there are some variations, of course based on the fact we have different temperatures on Earth, right? So, okay, how do you manage the thermal system in the satellite? Well, you don't have conduction. You don't have convection. You know, it's there's no space, so it's a vacuum. There's nothing that's touching this other than other components within the satellite. So radiation is the primary means to get heat out of the satellite and to some extent inside of the satellite to heat up the components, although you can use electronics to heat them up. And you can use conduction to move the heat from one area to another area that it can be radiated out a little bit better. So on the International Space Station, they have these big giant radiators. These things are designed to have as little sunlight on them as possible. And what they'll do is they'll take the heat in from the spacecraft and they'll transmit it out into space through radiation. They'll radiate it out. Um, very useful thing. Now, you have to get the heat to the radiators to work. There are a couple of different ways you can do that. Uh, one of the common ways is a heat pipe, which will allow you to passively move the heat from one area to another area. Uh, these are used on a number of spacecraft that I'm aware of. You know, you might put these underneath the, uh, the radio signal, for instance, because those often generate a lot of power and need to be very carefully temperature controlled. So you can take the heat away from there to somewhere where it can be better applied. Um, the gold foil that's seen on spacecraft, as you can see here, is typically a blanket. And now because you don't have to worry about conduction or convection very much, what this, this blanket that's covering it would just be multiple layers of mylar, like the, the type of um, material that inflatable balloons are made out of or something like that uh, very very similar and in between these these nylar you want to keep them separated so they just put a thin mesh uh, to keep the layers separated and this is a blanket that can help keep the the temperature the whatever temperature you desire now as all electronics create some kind of heat then they will naturally heat up over time and they'll also heat up through the sun if it goes through eclipse then the satellite will naturally cool down there during the sun so in short the thermal system of a satellite needs to be very carefully maintained um, for a cubesat or something that doesn't need to last for a long time it might not matter as much but uh, it certainly matters a lot to keep a satellite alive for many many years um, you want to keep the, the temperature of the batteries right. The propellant has certain temperatures that operate right. So you might have some heaters on the spacecraft that will heat the, the different components to the correct temperature. You can't 
really put a cooler on. You can do some passive cooling, but it'll actually heat the the system if you don't do it right. Um, even worse than what you started out with. Um, that they have all kinds of coolers. the The James Webb Space Telescope has some huge things to help keep the sensors there down to the very low temperatures that they need for the infrared sensors to work there. There's all kinds of interesting things that can be done, but uh, that's beyond the scope of this course. Thank you very much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions you guys have. I will do the best I can when it comes to thermal stuff, but like I said, I'm not really a super expert in this. But um, thank you much for joining me on this journey. We will see you next time. Until then, keep on tracking.